next speaker is Katerina Kanakis. She is uh, employed by the Department of Environment and Science. Katerina is a behavioural scientist within the Human Dimensions team in the Office of the Great Barrier Reef and World Heritage. Within this role, she enables accelerated practice change in agricultural activities to reduce their impact on water quality of the Great Barrier Reef. Welcome, Katerina. Hello, everyone. I uh, just wanted to give a shout out that we only have two people in the Human Dimensions team in OGBR and WH as well. Uh, so it's me and Meg, who you all met earlier. Um, so, oh, is that the right one? Big green button. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of us. The biggest one? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm pressing. Oh, 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 I have to point it that way. Okay. Um, okay, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about social monitoring's application in reef teams, uh, giving a new meaning to SMART goals and highlighted where I got SMART from. I'm not actually going to talk about SMART goals um, in here, but talk about our social monitoring. <laughs> um, so where this all began. Uh, so we've heard a lot today about the Reef 2050 um, improvement plan. I'm going to talk specifically today about the Reef 2050 water quality improvement plan. Um, so the 2017 to 2022 Reef 2050 water quality improvement plan included a human dimension target for the first time. Um, so this was a shift to recognising that the reef needs to be considered as a socio-ecological socio system. Uh, so human dimensions were defined as the human factors that exist at all social scales and play a role in shaping social, economic, cultural and environmental outcomes associated with the reef. Um, so quite a small definition there. So in the context of water quality, human dimensions included social, cultural, institutional and economic factors. And this ranged from, um, ranges from aspirations and capacities of landholders, um, industries and communities to their stewardship practices and the broader governance of the reef. So the Human Dimensions target recognises that actively engaging the communities and land managers who influence water quality is critical to support progress towards land and catchment management outcomes. So the Office of the Great Barrier Reef and World Heritage invests in agricultural practice change projects within the reef uh, catchments that focus on uh, reducing sediment, nutrients and pesticides being lost to local waterways. Um, and this is to ultimately um, improve water quality outcomes for the reef. So in recognising that presenting people with science and facts alone does not lead to behaviour change, behavioural and social science principles have been embedded in our projects um, to increase their impact. So one aspect of this is uh, the monitoring of opinions of farmers engaged in practice change projects. Um, so some smart people in OGBR before my time who are here today, um, with the help of CSIRO, designed a short survey of six questions to measure the biggest social predictors of behaviour change. Uh, so this included attitudes, group norms, self-efficacy, motivations and barriers. Uh, so this monitoring is designed to better understand why change is or isn't happening um, and to provide insight into how we can accelerate practice change. So what I have here um, is the first year of data that we have um, that has been used to track the human story behind practice change uh, for the reef report card. So this is what's on the uh, reef report card online. Uh, so this data presents the perceptions of cane growers and graziers who are engaged in practice change projects to reduce sediment, nutrients and pesticides entering local waterways in the 2019 to 2020 financial year. Uh, so we only had enough results in this year from cane growers and graziers uh, to present, but in future years, uh, we should be able to include results from bananas um, and horticulture as well. So in motivations, uh, the top one there, what we find is the most common reported motivation for cane growers to change their practices is regulations. Uh, so to comply with regulations. And for graziers, it's environmental benefits. 
Um, but we see with both cane growers and graziers, they tend to note productivity and financial factors as motivations as well. Moving on to attitudes, and attitudes was, is measured um, as whether or not the practice is positive for the landholder to do on their farm, is generally quite positive, and we usually see that attitudes are high before uh, the project, um, and this tends to strengthen after being involved in the project. Similarly, perceptions of self-efficacy, which was measured as how easy the practice is to do on their farm, uh, is usually high before and strengthened. Um, after being involved in projects. In terms of barriers to practice change, we can see that uh, weather and seasonal variations pose an issue for both cane growers and graziers. Um, financial factors also tend to come up as a barrier for landholders. Uh, so it costs too much or they're worried about reductions in profitability. But so what? So this monitoring can help us inform targeted and effective program design and communications as well. My papers are sticking together. I've glued them together. Um, so the results show some differences between the industries in terms of what they report is motivating them to change their behaviour. So rather than providing blanket narratives across industries in terms of why landholders should be involved in practice change projects, we can better target the relevant industries based on these types of findings. So for example, programs targeting cane growers may see improved engagement through promoting programs in terms of compliance with regulations um, and the financial aspects of the practice change, both of which were reported as motivations for practice change by cane growers. On the other hand, programs targeting graziers may benefit from communicating the impact of their stewardship um, by being involved in programs um, and what that impact has on the environment. The results also show us which barriers to tackle. Uh, so in terms of the main barrier of the weather and seasonal variations, uh, we can incorporate into programs what the practice change means in terms of the weather and the seasons um, and further work with landholders to help mitigate those impacts. Financial factors being reported were reported as both motivations and barriers to engaging um, in the practice change. And this suggests that the financial factors could be a key factor in getting landholders engaged um, and continuing on with that practice change. But the tricky thing that we can often come up against um, is that the practices that benefit water quality may not necessarily have a financial benefit to the landholder. Um, so this is where we can use some of the other information to inform our approach. So we could focus on the other motivations that people may hold for practice change um, and what people may expect to receive from the project outside of a financial benefit. We could also focus on the barriers that will be addressed in the project. Um, what we also do with this uh, data is to provide it back to the project providers. Uh, so this provides not only an opportunity to talk through some of the behaviour change theory, uh, but to also develop some tailored and practical ways that the data can be used to inform project delivery. Uh, so this creates a two-way capability building opportunity really in that we get to hear some of the on-ground experience from providers to gain more of a picture and to fill in some of the gaps of what we see in the data that comes in. Oh. So our task now is to refine the human dimensions indicators relevant to the reef, quality, reef water quality and uh, develop a baseline. So we've just undertaken a review to um, improve our survey. Uh, for our baseline, we have some understanding of the landholders involved in programs, but we need to get better at monitoring that broadly across the industries. And I'm running out of time, um, but we really need to trial new approaches um, and get better at collaborating, which we already do, but to do it better and more. Thank you.